Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today, Tennessee House Speaker Cameron Sexton is our guest, and we're happy to have him back on the show. Mr. Speaker, I've noticed you, you came into office in the wake of a scandal with your, pre, with your predecessor who resigned from office, or at least resigned from his leadership post. I noticed very slowly it seems you are implementing some changes in some of the rules. For example, you're now adopting a drug-free workplace. For the first time, you're going to require legislative employees to take drug tests. I may surprise people that it hadn't already happened. You're also changing the sexual harassment program, and you're also uh, getting rid of what used to be called the meeting before the meeting by lawmakers. Um, you don't make a big deal about it, but are you trying to very quietly make some changes that maybe didn't look right or smell right in the legislature? Well, I mean, when you go through things, if you if you don't adopt and change and review how you how you got to that point that you were in before, then you're not doing your job effectively. And so, one of the things that we did is we went back and did a wholesale relook at all the policies. Um, before the the employees never had to sign the employee handbook, but the first time they were hired, and they never saw it again. So we changed that process to where on an annual basis we're going to go over all the policies and procedures. Sexual harassment too, we're putting more emphasis on that and lining it up more with what the business community has. You know, the pre-meetings, we met with the chairman and we've done away with those. We think that the uh, the transparency and, and the value that we're coming out of those, we need to be better place to put in the committee system. Another controversy that came up the very first day of this session was the Senate passing a bill that would allow abortion, um, excuse me, uh, adoption groups, not to, in particular those that are, that are of religious nature, not to have to de, uh, have do business with uh, LGBT couples mm -hmm. be, if, if they feel like that violates their religious right. standards. There were a number of major businesses, we understand, who contacted the governor not to sign that bill. He has signed it. Do you share any concerns that these businesses do that we're going to see boycotts in Tennessee lose investment and lose meetings and other things because of um, the governor and the state now going into that kind of uh, legislation? Well, I don't know what they mean by that kind of legislation because you're protecting someone's religious freedom and, and religious liberties, and, and that's not a bad thing. We did that years ago with the uh, Christian Counseling Bill where they would refer you to uh, another counselor if, if, they, if you were asking them to counsel you on something that was outside their religious belief. Um, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't understand. It's not affecting businesses. It, it allows somebody to value their faith and, and run their business that way. But if it gives Tennessee, um, for whatever reason, a bad reputation among businesses making those investments isn't that something you need to try to work to change well I mean if they say that we're having a bad reputation because we're protecting your religious freedom and your religious liberties I think we'll take that hit uh, staying in the area of uh, families um, this, the governor has announced effective in March that there's going to be uh, extended paid family leave up to 12 weeks so the state has about I think up to six weeks a bill like that has been sitting around the legislature for years, never went anywhere, usually sponsored by Democrats. So mm -hmm. why the change? Is it because you have to compete with other businesses? You have to compete with other city governments and county governments to get, in, get and keep employees? Well, I mean, that's the governor's uh, initiative. That's one of the things that he's put forth. It didn't come from the General Assembly. He felt strongly in it. He did an executive order um, allowing for up to 12 weeks, which he could do, which for certain executive offices. There's about 3,000 state employees um, that look like it needs to come back through the statute and rules process. It's a governor's initiative, and we'll be happy to discuss that as it goes through the committee Do system. Do you think it's a good idea? The, the, the others that have to be covered by that aren't covered under the governor's executive order, do you believe the legislature will probably approve them receiving those benefits as well? Well, we'll have to take a look at it because there's, there's a lot more to it than just the 12 weeks. There's a cost to it. Can we afford to do it? What does that look like? There's, there's a lot of differing opinions on what that cost would be. The also, for whether you could... I'm sorry, go ahead. The governor's aides indicated that the cost, at least for the part of their, they were what they were providing the 12 weeks for was only was going to be cost less than a million dollars. Do you think it's much larger for the other parts of the state government in terms of their employee base to do this 12 weeks? Oh no, we're going to have to have conversations because last year fiscal review on that bill that was put forth by a, a Democrat representative it had a price tag in the in the tens of millions of dollars. So we're trying to go through that and, and really understand how it's not going to cost some money and, and some other stuff. I think the governor's looking at some reversion money. Um, so that's just part of the process and we argue over fiscal notes all the time. Uh, the state also has had, been had some controversy over the fact that they have stockpiled some money from the federal government, uh, one for families first um, uh, needs and another for daycare that, that probably together comes close to a billion dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, the state 
at least the administration so far, has been relatively slow to come up with a plan for you. Maybe, the, maybe it'll be in the governor's speech on Monday night, but is the legislature going to have to step in and do something? I mean, you don't want to spend all that money, but a well, billion dollars in a reserve fund for these things doesn't just seem like sense. Well, yeah, there are two pots of money for two totally different things. What I would say is the governor's office hasn't been slow. They've been working with us, and we've been moving at a very uh, deliberate pace. And so they're not really slow low on anything. We are trying to coordinate and work this out. But given the importance of daycare in this, and with the number of women that are voters these days and, and, the, and the needs for daycares, at least in this part of the state, and I assume across the state, don't you want to be able to spend that money in an election year in particular to, to make women and families feel like they've got a place to get some help? Well, I think we're more concerned with spending that right and having the right outcomes with the right goal than just throwing money out the window and saying we spent some money and then we think it may or may not help. We want to identify what the long-term goal is, what we want to accomplish, and then spend the money within that realm. Last year, Republicans were divided about what to do about further restrictions on abortions, particularly about a heartbeat bill where abortion would be uh, outlawed after a heartbeat could be detected that can be as early as six weeks now all the Republicans seem to have come together behind this what how did you all get together to make that happen even bringing Lieutenant Governor McNally in on it well you have to give the, the administration a lot of credit they worked with the Senate over this summer in the last several months to to try to bridge that gap and get to a bill that they would like we still have some work to go and some more questions to answer but the governor's proposed it and we'll we'll be hearing it soon there's some things that were talked about when the bill came up and it's still being drafted that said well if six weeks is not the limit then maybe we'll put something in the bill that if six weeks is struck down it goes to 12 weeks right. or it goes to 18. I've never seen a bill drafted like that before. Can you do? Can you give multiple choice answers or multiple choice um, things to do based on what the, the, the statute passes says? Well, they call it the latter thing, and, and uh, he has very competent people at their work for him who says that they think they can do that and have that as a means to allow the courts. And a bill that can pass and, and pass muster in the courts because bills like this have been struck down all over the country. Well, I mean, a similar bill uh, of similar states. Other states are going different directions. So the governor's bill is a part Missouri, part Kentucky. Kentucky with a little bit of Tennessee in it. So, House Speaker Kevin Sexton is our guest on Inside Politics. We'll continue to talk to him about all the issues going up on the state after you watch these messages.